Thus far in this lesson, we have read or written the entire contents of a file at one time, either reading the contents of a file into a single string or taking a single string and writing it to a file. In this part of the lesson, we are going to look at how we can create lists both in the text file itself and in our Python program. An important part of this is recognizing the role that new lines play in files and in reading and writing files in Python. Let's start by seeing what happens if we write to the same file multiple times. In the past, we've done just a single write after we open the file object, but in this case, we have three different string variables and we're gonna write each of them in separate write statements. Let's execute the code. Nothing obvious has happened, but if we go to finder, we can see here is data file.txt. If I open it up in my text editor, I can see that there's a somewhat strange uh, outcome. Everything that I put into the file is just concatenated together in a single string. There, even though I wrote three times, they are not found on separate lines. The reason why all three of the strings are on the same line is because they did not have any new line characters at the end of them. Remember that a new line character is essentially an invisible character that doesn't display as a, a character, but rather as an action saying that the text should break and go on to the next line. We can write a new line character by using backslash n, which is an escaped letter n that stands for a new line character. That new line character basically says, after you finish with these characters, go down to the next line. So if I insert new line characters and if I concatenate them to each of the strings as I write them into the file, let's see what that does. Now, if I look at what is in the data file, I can see that each of the strings is on a separate line because at the end of each line, there is a new line character. And if I notice carefully, after the last line, there is also a new line character because um, the cursor drops down to the next line and so there is an invisible new line character at the end of this line, even though I don't see anything. If I hit delete, uh, then I delete that last new line character. And now I can see the cursor does not go down to the next line. In word processing, sometimes these are called hard return characters, which basically means the same thing as a new line character. When we learned about the print function, one of the things that we noticed is that after each string is printed, it will then move the cursor down to the next line on the display. So part of the built-in action of a print statement is to add a new line character to the end of whatever it is that you are displaying on the console. So it turns out that we can actually use the print function to print not just to the console output, but also into a file by adding in the argument file equals and then the name of the file object. So the first part of the print statement can have one or more arguments, which are the strings that we want to print, but then the final argument is the file equals file object telling it where it should print to. Because each of these is within a print statement, even though the strings, first line, second line, third line, do not have new lines embedded in them, they should still show up on separate lines. So if I run this script and look at the text file, I can see that they are indeed each on a separate line and that there is a trailing new line character after the last line as well. So by using the print statement, I was able to basically achieve the same result that I had 
when I explicitly added in new line character at the e end of each of the write methods. So the other thing that you can notice the difference between the write method and the print function is that the write <coughs> method is a method, so we attach it to the end of the object that we want to write with a dot, whereas the print function is a function, and the thing that we want to print gets passed into it as an argument.